doors. Doors. And more doors. Hi. Let's make some doors. Last week we made our tiles. That was a lot of fun. They came out way better than I thought that they would. Time to move on to the essential dressing, starting today with doors. I must have done doors a dozen different ways over the years. Only ever showed one or two on the channel, uh, the clip-ons, and then I gave a glimpse last week of what I've been using lately, washers with the door hot glued onto it. So it's got weight at the bottom. It's freestanding, it can go anywhere, but it doesn't look particularly great. Since I'm starting over, I want this to synergize. I want it to match the tiles really well. So that's what we're gonna do. Right, here's the plan first. I know I want the door itself to be one inch wide, consistent with the base of a standard miniature. I also know I want the overall width of the little piece to be something less than two inches. Give a little breathing room in case there's ever multiple of them right next to each other on one wall. So I'll shave off a quarter inch. We'll go with one and three quarter inch wide. If you want this in metric, I'll show it in a moment. Taking away the door, that's three eighth inch on either side. Turns out a door that's one and three quarter inch high scales pretty darn well with a typical 28 millimeter miniature for scale. And I would like the frame's thickness to be the same all the way around, so that's another three eighths at the top. I also arbitrarily decided that a half inch thick would provide a wide enough base that these are fairly sturdy and won't topple over, but also don't occupy an entire square. And here's all that in metric. Now I've had a lot of projects going on in parallel and I've saved all these off cuts from foam. I milled down some long pieces. I think it was for the white plume mountain build a few weeks ago. And it turns out I have these sticks left over and they're exactly the right size. Three eighth by half inch. So to make one door, I chopped three pieces at one and three quarters. In the one that's gonna become the top of the frame, I scored a slit at least halfway through the thickness down the middle lengthwise. Texturized them with a foam ball. You can actually do this later on. That's what I switched to eventually. And after hot gluing the two sides to the top of the frame, I took some cereal box cardstock and cut out a one inch wide rectangle. This gets inserted into that slit in the top and then the whole thing gets hot glued to some chipboard. This is graphics medium chipboard. It's the stuff you find at the back of a legal pad, but you can buy it in bulk like I do if you want. There's links in the video description below. Anyway, it's good hearty stuff. So this is a half inch by one and three quarter inch rectangle. Nip the corners to round them a bit and hot glue the door on. Now, identical to our previous Back to Basics video, I'm using my soldering iron on low heat again to carve out the blocks that form this doorway. And again, a lot here is identical to the tiles that we just did, so I'm not gonna harp on it. Healthy coat of Mod Podge on the entire thing, tinted with black paint so I know where I've been, overbrush the whole thing with a dark gray, pick out some stones with a very light gray, and a middle gray, and a very, very muted tan. Dry brush with sandstone, wash with black, 10 parts water to one part paint. And do these in batches, I made 10 at a time. While they're drying, let's make the actual doors themselves. Once again, back to cereal box card stock, cutting out some one by one and three quarter inch rectangles. And to those, I will mount these craft picks. These are tapered, they actually get wider here at the non pointy end, so I chop off that right, right about where the taper begins and five of these fit cleanly within one inch. I'm using super glue because I'm impatient here. Cures within a minute or two. Double check the height against a dummy door frame and then chop off the excess wood. Now, waste not, want not. The points of these craft picks you wanna hold on to. Take two of them and mount them as like the hinges. Also that curved end chopped off that little bit and that's the block to which the door pole will be mounted. Don't forget, you'll need one for each side and they need to be mirrored. And remember that our sponsor is Heroes Horde for you 3D printers out there. Excellent selection, including all True Tiles lines. Painting, I'm going with the method that I stumbled upon last year. Been using it ever since. I no longer carve texture into my wood. It's already wood, it looks like wood. We just need to colorize it. This asphaltum color is kind of an orangey brown. So I've got it pretty watered down here getting all the excess off. This is just enough to tint it. It dries within 10 minutes. After that, for added complexity, I went to a darker brown and did the exact same thing, watered down coat over the whole door. I experimented with a few different shades to see what I would like. Ultimately, I decided while the contrast is nice, it is a dungeon door. 
I'm gonna save those richer wood tones for cool furniture features later on. These are four millimeter round jump rings. You'll find them in the jewelry making section of your crafting store. With tweezers and a bit of super glue, I mount these as the door pole or door handle. It, as well as the hinges, get a simple coat of gunmetal. And then the whole door gets glued in with super glue. If the Mod Podge didn't creep down and secure that middle cardboard strip to the base, this is the time to put a bead of super glue in there as you insert the door to tie everything together. It becomes very strong. There's other types of doors that tend to show up in dungeons. You got your standard open archway, like doorless door, if you will. So that's easy. It's exactly what we just did, except no door in the middle. Although with no door, these are gonna be very fragile. So I skewered toothpicks into the sides of the frame. And what about a portcullis or like a gate? I tried a few methods messing around with beads and toothpicks, uh, granny grating and different designs. But ultimately here's what I decided upon. Cutting a one inch strip of those craft picks from earlier and super gluing toothpicks to them leaving like, I don't know, 3 eighths of an inch, 10 millimeters of point below one bar. Then it gets sandwiched with another bit of craft pick on the other side. All of this is done with super glue. And then a second set of bars. Again, it's a sandwich, one on each side, like 15 millimeters above that. Now the points at the other end are used to pre-drill where they're gonna go into the top of the stone frame. Then they are chopped to length. Bit of white glue for good measure and inserting it so that the bottom of the spikes are exactly where the base of the door is gonna be. And a couple dabs of any kind of your favorite glue on that bottom bar to attach it to the insides of the two frame sides. This extra connection point gives two axes of rigidity and makes the piece very strong. The gate, I just paint with gunmetal and then I was feeling frisky, so I gave it a little bit of rust effect. In hindsight, I'm not crazy about it, but it's easy to paint right back over and figure something else out later. Yeah, see, it's a little overboard, kind of looks brown splotchy. That's okay, I'll fix it up in the future. Now, I won't pretend that these are rock solid. If someone gives a good bump to the table, yeah, they might tipple over. But honestly, it's fine. I've never really regarded stability at the table as a deal breaker. I have no interest in embedding magnets or doing any of that stuff. Set down the tile, set down the door. Keep it simple. But for now, I made 10 doors, four, quote, archways, and four portcullises. Portcullai. Portcullis? Yeah, so on a wallless tile system like this, you kind of have to have these doorless open frames because that indicates where a room exit into a hallway might be. I mean, I guess you could put that hallway tile down, but by doing that, you're kind of revealing information like the length of that hallway or in general, what's through the other side. I don't know. Maybe I should make some like actual curved arch versions of these. Well, thanks so much for watching. What are other essentials we're going to need in the near future? Like traps, furniture. This is back to basics, folks. I'm starting over. So leave a comment below with what you want me to build next. If this video happened to be your first exposure to DIY making stuff, miniature things for your tabletop gaming, you should know you're not alone. There's over 40,000 of us on Facebook, the Tabletop Crafters Guild. Come on and find us. Thanks again for watching. Till next time, I am Wylock. Make things and play games.